Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I bring you a very exciting video since a lot of us, either we're back working, we are about to go back working, or we just have errands to go and take care of. If you are like me and you're a makeup lover, one big hassle is like, how in the world am I going to keep my makeup on while wearing a mask? Because Hopefully, you are wearing masks whenever you go out in public, please do so. And if you do, you know how annoying it is to do your makeup, not necessarily do a full glam and eyeshadows and false lashes and the whole shabam, but you try to do makeup to kind of like make yourself feel better, you know, make yourself feel a little bit more comfortable. And then, after going and doing the stuff that you have to do and you go you get back into your car take the mask off and then you look at yourself in the mirror and it's like what what just happened what, where did all my effort go to and it's all in your mask and your entire nose is smeared your chin is smeared too and yada yada and you don't want that happening right so today's video is all about what you can do, what steps you are going to have to take and have to do in order to make sure that your makeup stays intact while wearing your mask. Now, is it going to add a couple more steps into your normal routine? Probably. But is this going to be something that if I need to get ready for work, do I have to get up an hour earlier to achieve? Absolutely not, girl. I would never do that. So, no, there's no need for that. Uh, it's just going to be a couple of other steps that you are going to add, and eventually you'll do them without a problem, and it's going to be just equally as fast as just your normal makeup routine would take. So, if you are interested, please keep on watching and please make sure to give this video a thumbs up and if you haven't already please go ahead and subscribe I would greatly greatly appreciate it thank you for being here thank you for clicking on this video and hanging out with me for a little bit so without further ado let's get into it all right let's go ahead and get started for this type of makeup to ensure that everything lasts as long as possible while wearing your mask, you have two very important factors. Number one is powder, a good translucent setting powder. And number two, a setting spray. Now the setting spray, uh, you don't want it to be a dewy setting spray. You don't necessarily have to use a matte setting spray either, but you don't want one that you already know is going to leave your face looking and feeling very dewy because of the tackiness. Whenever you use a dewy setting spray, your face feels tacky the entire day, which is a very fresh kind of look into your face, but it's not going to work well in this case because that tackiness is going to make your makeup transfer onto your mask, which you want to avoid at all costs because then your makeup will not last under the mask. Does that make sense? All right, so the first thing that you are going to need to do is prep your face with all of the skincare that you do before applying makeup. Any moisturizer, any serums, any... Uh, face creams, whatever it is that you like to use, eye creams, etc., etc. You don't need to change any of that. Just as long as you know that you're using the products that you're comfortable with, that work with your skin, you're good to go. Let it sink into your skin. This is why I did it before starting to film. I gave it a chance uh, to just let it all soak up into my skin. Now that I know, like it's still tacky because of all of the moisture that I used, but it, but I don't feel the products being just on top of my sink, my skin. I'm sorry, they've already been absorbed. Now I'm going to grab a sponge that is just slightly wet. You don't want it to be like you don't want to squeeze this and have water drip 
from it. You just want it to be moist, if that makes sense. Okay, now I'm going to grab a translucent setting powder. This one is from Anastasia Beverly Hills. And with this, I am going to use my sponge. Now this sponge, I am only going to use it for the powder specifically. Uh, I just find it easier that way. And I'm going to not put a whole lot. You don't want to just put too much product into your sponge and if you happen to, if you happen to feel like, oh my God, this is too much, all you have to do is kind of like tap your sponge into the, the lid. That should be good to get us started with. And you're going to powder your face. You do not have to overdo it. Don't feel like you need to use a ton of powder. Once you are done, and you're happy with the amount of powder that you have and you already saw that it's all blended in, you don't have like chunks of powder anywhere, you're going to grab a setting spray. Now, like I mentioned, you don't want any dewy setting spray. You want a setting spray that you know that holds your makeup, really, really helps your makeup last longer and that it dries without feeling tacky. So I'm going to use the All Nighter the Smashbox Photo Finish Setting Spray is also a really great one. I'm going to actually use this towards the end. Spray. And then let it dry. All right, now my face is completely dry, completely set. Over top, I'm going to go ahead and put my primer, whichever primer you like the most, if you like a mattifying one, a pore filling one, whichever one. I'm going to go ahead and use, once again, my Beauty Creations Poreless Primer, and I'm going to put it on just like I normally would. Now, some of you might be wondering, well, doesn't the powder underneath it kind of messes up with the texture of the primer, makes it look chunky and ugly. This is why you don't want to overdo it with the powder at the very beginning. This is why you tap off the excess from your sponge and also why you don't want that sponge that you're using for the powder to be soaking wet. Because if it is soaking wet, it's going to uh, pick up more product and when you are putting it into your face, it's not going to really set it nicely. I'm not really sure how to explain it but you'll end up with like chunks of powder over your face it's happened to me before i learned the hard way because i had to like wash my face and redo everything you don't want that sponge to be very very wet you want it to just be moist almost to the point that it's kind of dry already but you don't want it to be totally dry either and be careful with the amount of powder that you're using now for the foundation I would also steer clear from very dewy ones because of the same reason as the uh, as I mentioned for the setting sprays I don't necessarily have dewy foundations they're not my thing uh, but it doesn't mean that you have to have to use a matte foundation either just like with the setting spray also you want one that you don't that you already know the coverage and you know that you don't have to put layers and layers and layers of it because the more layers that you put a foundation the easier it's going to be for everything to transfer into your mask obviously I'm going to use this one that I haven't actually used in a long time the LA colors truly matte foundation I have two shades one is nude the other one is medium beige I like to mix these two uh, this has extremely good coverage uh, it says truly matte so technically this is a matte foundation but it's not extremely matte either it's a very comfortable matte I also like the fact that with this foundation, I already know it has great coverage, so I know I'm not going to have to do three layers of it. The next step can go either two ways. You can now move on to concealer, or if you are someone who 
you know you have a really long shift at work, for example, and you know that you are probably going to spend a lot of that time at work outside in the heat. So you want that extra, extra um, support, if you may, with your makeup, then you can go ahead and go once again over with some setting spray and then let it dry. Okay, now I am ready for some concealer. Now grab your favorite concealer. Um, I've been actually really, really enjoying the uh, Shop Miss A AOA concealer. So I'm going to go ahead and use a little bit of this and I'll blend it like usual. All right, now that you have your concealer, the next step is going to be to powder everything. Set underneath your eyes and the entire rest of your face. Powder is really going to be that barrier against transferring. Okay, if at this point you feel like you look way too powdery because maybe you're someone who doesn't usually use as much powder, I do because I am more on the oily side, especially with the summer heat and stuff like that. So right now I feel comfortable, but I understand that not everyone likes the powder look um, and that's totally okay. So you can go ahead and use uh, some more setting spray at this time. I'm actually going to skip it for now, but it's totally up to you. You do whatever works for you. And I'm going to continue with the face makeup. The rest of the face makeup, it's pretty much like you usually would. I'm going to go into some bronzer. For that, I'm going to use my Tardiest Pro Palette. I actually like mixing the two shades right there. For blush, I'm going to use this one by B Milani. This is the Coral Cove Blush. Okay, off camera, I just cleaned up underneath my brows and used some brow gel to fill them in. Now I'm going to use some highlight. I'm actually going to use the highlights from the Tarte palette. I like to mix the both of them. Okay, so now I can go ahead and dust this off and guess what we're going to use next? Yes, a more setting spray. So let's go ahead and get rid of this powder. Now I'm not going to use the all nighter. I'm going to use this one by Smashbox because this is great at preventing any transferring. So let's go ahead and use it. Alrighty, so off camera, I already set my lids and put some soap in my brows. Now you can totally move on to mascara, call it a day, but I want to add a little bit something to the eye since that's the area of the face that most people are seeing now, just the eyes. The rest is pretty much covered up. So I'm going to go ahead and use this Urban Decay Wired Double Ended Eyeliner and Top Coat. This one is in Fuse. It comes in a packaging that looks like this with the wired in there, really like it. On one side, you have a liquid eyeliner the tip looks like that, pretty tiny, so you can actually get a pretty decent uh, wing with that. On the other side, you have this thing that kind of looks like a little sponge. And I don't know if you can see it on camera, probably not. Come on, focus. But there's like little particles in the sponge that is what makes the magic happen. So let's go ahead and do a little wing with this. Now that the wing is done, here's where the fun part starts. So you go ahead and open up the, they call it the transformer side. On the lid, there's like a tiny bit of powder. Those are the particles that you see on the sponge that's going to transform the liner. So you need to make sure that you have those particles in there and then you're going to go ahead and tap it and see it starts transforming into well in this case that green shade 
Okay, our liner is looking very uh, green and kind of like glittery actually. I really, really like it. Gives kind of like a twist to your typical liner look. So now it's mascara time. I'm going to do uh, a coat of each. Now I want to make sure that I use a mascara that I know it's going to hold up a curl. So if you have like a waterproof mascara that you really enjoy, go ahead and use that one. I'm just going to use these two for right now. Both are from Too Faced. One is the Damn Girl Mascara, the other is the Better Than Sex one. Okay, I went ahead and let my mascara dry for a little bit. I also added um, some brow bone highlight. I used the highlight on this palette and then some inner corner highlight as well. Now that golden uh, highlight that you see is actually from this Amuse highlighter. I am not sure what the shade is called, but it's actually attempting to be a dupe for Fenty Beauty's um, what's Trophy Wife. There you go. I had it in my mind when I tried to say it completely went blank sorry looks like this gorgeous gorgeous shade um, I can't really wear it as a highlight at least not on its own I have over top a much more champagne highlight but I love it on the inner corner and I think it works really really well with that green shade that we have going on but anyways now Obviously, we cannot just not curl our lashes unless you're like gifted with extremely beautiful curly lashes. Um, but since I, this is all about maintaining the look for the longest possible time, I'm going to go ahead and grab my curler and my blow dryer and I'm going to heat it up. Touch it to make sure it's not too hot for your eyes to handle and then curl away. Last thing we have to do is lips, or you can skip it since pretty much no one is going to look at your lips, but if you're doing this mostly to kind of feel as normal as possible and you know that you have a lip color down there, by all means, go ahead and do it. I'm going to use this lipstick by Flower Beauty. It's in the shade Petal Pout. I think. No, peachy nude. Petal pout is what the lipstick in itself is called. Now I typically love the fact that this is a very creamy lip color, but since we are wearing a mask, uh, you don't want that creaminess or else it's going to transfer all over your mask and you'll end up with lip stains or not lip stains but lipstick stains all over your face you don't want that so over top end i'm actually going to go back into the translucent powder and with this you're going to mattify it but mattify it in a very comfortable way it's not going to feel as if you were to use a very very matte uh, liquid lipstick where it kind of like even hurts and you feel like your lips are completely dead It's not going to feel like that at all And with that you are done What do you think of the makeup look? It's a very simple of course. I'll go ahead and admit that I wasn't trying to go this extravagant. It's just the things that I've done that have helped me make sure that my makeup stays as intact as possible throughout all of this. I know we all want some sense of normalcy and making sure that your makeup stays a punt kind of brings that into at least into me and I'm sure a lot of you can relate it's kind of keeping at least that part of your day as normal as possible now do I look a little bit powdery as of right now sure one might um, say so but I know that at least my skin and my personal experience three to four hours from now my natural oils are going to start peeking through so I do not mind it. I know that right now looking just a tad bit powdery because I don't feel like oh my gosh I look like I put 
the entire setting powder on my face or anything like that. It's at the end of the day going to be a little bit helpful in maintaining my makeup look as normal as possible throughout the day. So there you have it. Give it a go. I will be the first to tell you that I was very skeptical to the whole put powder and then over top go with your primer and then your foundation. When I first heard about it, I was like, whoa, 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 what? It's going to end up looking like a total mess. And it really doesn't. It helps quite a lot. So go ahead and give it a try yourself and let me know down below if you are going to go ahead and try it first and foremost. And if you have already or if you will once you do let me know if it worked for you hope you have an amazing day or night wherever you are and i'll see you on the next one don't forget to like and subscribe before you leave though all right see you on the next one bye